Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to cross the Orosund to Denmark once again. We're going back to Copenhagen, which as I've told you is one of the craft beer capitals of Europe. An awesome, awesome beer city these days in my opinion. And we're going to return to one of my favourite Danish craft brews, who are incidentally one of the more established names in Copenhagen these days. There's a hell of a lot of craft beer activity over there. But for this review, we're going to return to Amar Breikus, who of course are known as well for collaborating with a lot of American breweries and this is yet another half American half Danish beer that we have here. So this one is the Demon Juice which is a New England IPA coming in at 7% ABV and it's brewed in collaboration with Title Town Brewing Company who come to you from Green Bay in Wisconsin. Of course this city is famous for the Green Bay Packers hence the kind of football style artwork on this one. You know my knowledge of American football isn't the best. I mean I know Peyton Manning, the New York Giants, the Denver Broncos, the Green Bay Packers um, you know, other than that, I really don't know very much. It's kind of not the same as like Henrik Larsson and James McFadden, these kind of guys that I absolutely loved growing up. American football to me. Um, although, oddly enough, I know quite a few Swedes who are really quite into it. So it's, it's kind of interesting. It does have a little bit of a cult following Euro in Europe, American football, but definitely not as widely played as the original kind of football where you use your feet. But really looking forward to trying this one. This brewery is one of the brew, is apparently one of the top brew pubs that you're going to find in the US and of course it's cool to return to Wisconsin. I don't get to review too many beers from that state and of course the brewery that's really famous from there is uh, New Glarus and you've seen me review one or two of their things on the channel before as well. But really looking forward to trying this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. It's cool to try something else from another brewery in America. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries before we try the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, it's the link to my other reviews that I've done from Amar Brokers and a link that will take you to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Title Town Brewing. Very first time encountering them as I said. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Danish beers that I've reviewed for you and one for all the American American beers that I've reviewed. Both of those are constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Amar Brewers first off then, since these guys are the home brewery in this case. So Amar Brewers, as I've mentioned to you before, are based in Kastrup, which is kind of to the southeastern part of Copenhagen in Denmark and it's probably one of the best known Danish craft breweries and one of the most widely exported ones outside of Toil and Mikeller and Evil Twin of course, although Evil Twin technically are an American brewery now. But the brewery itself was established back in April of 2007 by two friends, Morten Valentin Lundsbach and Jakob Storm, both of whom were avid home brewers. But apparently in school the pair were forced to do a chemistry and physics project together and so they wrote about the fermentation process that was going on in beers and for them this was the seed firmly planted. But both went on to gain their brewing diploma from the Scandinavian Brewing School back in 2008 and the company has since gone on to become very highly decorated and like I said one of the best known Danish craft breweries these days. But their first brewery was located in Tornbu in the southern part of the city and they've been constantly expanding over the last couple of years. Quite recently, I think it might be about a year and a half ago now, they moved to a new site closer to the airport which has a much larger capacity and just a few months back actually, I'm filming this review for you at the very start of August 2019, they opened up their tap house bar uh, which is just next to a uh, new report station in Copenhagen or is it Nurebro station? I always get those two mixed up but um, it's next to the, the subway station and it's one that you definitely um, need to check out. It's a really nice bar in there actually and I'll need to go over there and do a little kind of out and about video for you at some point uh, quite soon actually. I think it's Nure I'm pretty sure it's Nurebro station rather than Nureport. I think Nureport is a DSV station rather than the Copenhagen Metro actually so do let me know in the comment section whether I've got that right. I'm pretty sure though. But this brewery as I've said they're good at 
both ends of the spectrum. One of my, or two of my favourite beers that I've had from these guys, in fact, is the Batch 1000, which is one of the best West Coast IPAs I've reviewed on the channel for you. And uh, one of my other favourite ones at the other end is Herr Fredriksen, which to me is one of the classic Danish Imperial Stouts and one that you really definitely need to try if you get the chance. Another favourite of mine probably is the Winter in Bangalore, which used Indian hops. That was really um, quite interesting, actually. But there's a whole host of different beers from these guys. They've also got the Wicked Tales of Scotland series, which is a barrel aged series, and they've also got the Sinners as well, which is one that I need to kind of review for you. It'd be cool to do series of those uh, videos at some point, uh, so, or you know, do a series of reviews of those beers at some point. So that's definitely a project for the future. But that's all you need to know about Amar Brokers. Just now, like I said, one of my favourite craft breweries in uh, in Denmark, and one of the more established names, as I said, too. So anyway, that, just check, if you want to learn a little bit more, check out the brewery website, and of course you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that as well. So anyway, on to the American side of this beer then. So Title Town Brewing Company, as I mentioned to you before, are based in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and they were founded back in 1996, and the main ban man behind the company is Brent Waker. So the brewery is located in an old railway depot of the Chicago and Northwestern Railway which was opened back in 1899 and can be found next to the Fox River in central Green Bay. So this building was on the na is on the National Register of Historic Places, having been a significant rail hub and hosted many celebrities and presidents over the years. The rail operations apparently ceased in 1971, but the building remained an important business infrastructure for the railway company until 1987, when the track was sold to Fox River Valley Railroad, and then later in 1993 it was sold on again to the Wisconsin Central Transportation Corporation, and the line was renamed Fox Valley and Western Railroad. But the building was vacated in 1994 and it lay empty until 1996 when a group of investors decided to start a brewery. So for a number of years the brewery operated as a very successful brew pub but in 2013 two adjacent warehouse buildings became available and this brewery was at the point where it really kind of needed to grow. So they purchased these buildings and then converted them and these buildings that they bought dated from the early 1900s. I think they said it was between 1908 and the early 1920s that these dated from and these formerly housed the Larson Canning Company which closed in 2004 after just over a 100 year existence. But today they, these buildings house the brewery rooftop, uh, the tap room, the event hall and the brewery hall itself and these opened back in 2015. But this company is regarded as one of the best brew pubs in the US from what I understand. I think it's within the top 20 or 30 in the whole country and they've produced 268 different varieties of beer as of August 2018 according to Untapped. And I have to admit I do quite like um, finding breweries like this that have got a little bit of railway heritage as well. I was always a bit of a a train nerd when I was uh, when I was quite young. I had one of the Hornby uh, model railways and uh, I always used to watch Thomas the Tank Engine as well. In fact, one of the things I always find quite funny is when you go on YouTube and watch the Thomas the Tank episodes and compare the old English ones. Who oh, Thomas was very angry at his trucks and uh, you go to the Americans, Thomas was very angry at his rail cars. Uh, I always used to find that quite funny. So it's quite cool to come across a brewery that do have a little bit of... Uh, a railway heritage to them as well. If you really want to laugh too, you can go and listen to uh, Thomas the Tank in Japanese, as my my girlfriend does sometimes, or uh, you can listen to it in Swedish as well, where it's very kind of sing-songy. So yeah, um, cool to come across this brewery, very well regarded, and like I said, cool to try something else from the uh, from the state of Wisconsin as well. But that's all you really need to know about uh, Title Town Brewing Company. So I think this is a brewery that I will need to visit when I get back across to the US sometime. I will be in uh, the northeast. Of the US in 2020 for another wedding so I don't know if I'll make it out west for another little bit yet but it's definitely on the cards for the future. But yeah um, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So as I mentioned to you at the start of the video this one is a 7% New England IPA. One of the things I was reading about this beer as well is that apparently um, Brent's daughter was studying in Copenhagen and that's where the connection between these breweries came. Um, but you can see a lovely article on this one. As I said, obviously a reference to the Green Bay Packers, which is pro what everyone in Europe would think if they heard uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. There you can see the Amar Brugge's bottle cap on this one. And there is the title town. 
um, brewing company symbol there. I'm just worried that I'm mispronouncing this. Maybe it's meant to be Tittletown, but I would assume that if it was meant to be Tittletown, it would have two T's in it. But I don't know. Americans pronounce things quite differently from what we do. If it's a European name, they tend to change it uh, quite a little bit. Um, but it says on the side here, Demon Juice is a beer born out of friendship across borders. Back in 2016, Jacqueline Waker out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, was an exchange student in Copenhagen, living with a host family in Amar, which is one of the district of uh, one of the southern districts of Copenhagen where this brewery takes its name incidentally. But Jacqueline or Jackie came from a brewing background as back in 1996 her dad Brent had founded one of the earliest craft breweries back home in Green Bay, Titletown Brewing Company, located in an old train depot registered in the National Register of Historic Places. Knowing her interest in beer and brewing, her Danish host family took her to Amar Brewers, where she immediately became a friend and volunteered pouring beer at a couple of Amar events with the skill and professionalism that only an upbringing in the beer world can give you. In the spring of 2019, Jackie messaged us telling us that she was going to be back in Europe, this time bringing her whole family on holiday. We quickly arranged a stopover in Denmark, this time to make an official collaboration beer between Town and Amar. And so, it was on May 13th that no less than five representatives of the Waker family, led by Jackie and her dad Brent, came to brew Demon Juice over a breakfast loaded by plenty of Danishes. Uh, Am uh, as Amar, like Green Bay, is a proud location of a for American football, we named the beer with a friendly nod at our very own local football heroes, the Amar Demons. This is a collaboration beer made with Titletown Brewing Company, Green Bay, Wisconsin, USA. I didn't know that they had an American football team there. Like I was saying, uh, American football does seem to have a little bit of a cult following um, over here in Europe. I mean, there are a few Swedes I know that are into it. I didn't know the Danes were into it as well, and some Germans I know too. Um, but the thing that's always cool about these beers is they tell you the malt bases and things like that. The uh, malt base in this one is Golden Promise and Cara Pills. And uh, the hops in this one are Columbus, which will be the bittering hop, I'm sure, Citra, Mosaic, Idaho 7, and Simcoe. And it's a London fog yeast that's used in this one. So I guess without further ado, let's get this guy out and we will get on with the taste. And then Idaho 7 is a really kind of interesting new hop that is, you know, a, quite a few people are getting into this one recently. So we'll see how it turns out in this beer. But let's get it out and into the glass then. I have to say, one of the things that I do miss about the Amar Brughouse beers is when they used to be in the big half litre bottles, you know. Um, yeah, I can understand why they do the 330s now, it helps them export more of their beer and it keeps the cost down a little bit because Danish beer, you know, it's a high, you know, it's a strong currency, the Danish kroner. And it's a high, you know, a high wage society basically in all of the Nordic countries. So it makes them export a little bit more, it makes their beers a bit more attractive price-wise in other countries and stuff like this. But yeah, as you can see with this one, as I mentioned, a 7% New England IPA earlier, um, it's poured a lovely, more yellowy coloured uh, hazy note, this one is, yeah, definitely leaning towards the yellow side of things. There's a half finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head on this one, it's not really creamy in the slightest, the colour of the head, but it looks pretty much as you would expect from a New England IPA. If I put my fingers behind the glass, this is definitely one of the hazier ones that I've come across. This might well be the haziest IPA that I've seen from Amar Brughus yet. The other one, of course, that comes to mind is the Bastard Princess, but I do remember it not being quite as, uh, as hazy as this one, but I think they were using different yeasts. I don't think it was London Fog they were using from that for that one, if memory serves correctly. But let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. That smells really nice. Um, yeah, so it's kind of, it's got a lot of tropical fruit to it, this one. You can pick up the mangoes right away in there, which will be from the citra. There's a little bit of passion fruit in there, which is from the Simcoe. I've always found that Simcoe gives you this really more slightly milky, milkshakey passion fruity quality out of the beer, whereas the Galaxy is a little bit more kind of pungent. And of course, you've got other hops like El Dorado and, and uh, things like that, which can give you a bit of that sort of stone fruity quality as well. The Idaho 7 is giving this beer, I, I want to say it's given it a very slightly melony quality if I'm remembering correctly, I think, let me just smell that again, um, yeah, I would definitely say there's a little bit of a melony quality in there, there's a bit of a papaya apricot -y kind of thing coming out of this beer as well, um, if you take it in a little bit more deeply as well, you do get that kind of tangerine orange note that you would expect of the mosaic, it definitely has a little bit of that juicy orange kind of in the background but almost at like the front of the nose if that makes sense it's more tropical like I said passion fruits 
a little bit of melon for me as well. I definitely would stick with that statement that I said, a little bit of melon. Um, and it's also got a little bit of a kind of mango-ish quality as well. And some papayas, apricots and uh, things like that. And they're not, maybe a little bit of pineapple or something as well, which is kind of interesting. I would say, yeah, melon, pineapple, papayas, apricots. There's quite a lot of that lighter, juicy tropical fruit in there. The mangoes as well, of course and a little bit of that more milky passion fruit that you'd always associate with Simcoe. So for me, this beer really is leading towards the, in terms of a New England IPA, it does lean quite heavily towards that juicy, um, tropical fruit side of the New England IPA spectrum. There's a little bit of the more oily, tangerine quality in there, but to me the tangerines have always come across as being a little bit more tropical than the oily orange. If you want a more oily orange, of course, it's Amarillo that you would use in your... Um, in your beers but yeah it definitely leans towards the juicy side of things this beer in terms of the green side of the hops you know there is a little bit of a floral quality there when you take it in a bit more deeply you've got a nice little bit of a lighter kind of grassy note in there as well which is cool but you also have this um you also have just a little teensy bit of earthiness too, which I would think would be coming from the Columbus Bittering Hop and also a little bit from the Mosaic too. You can pick out a little touch of earthiness in this one. The malt base for me is a bit difficult to kind of pick out. I think it's the juicy fruits that are leaning towards the front on this one. So they did say they used a bit of carapils in here and in fairness you can pick out a little bit of that biscuit quality, but to me the malt base of this beer is really quite um, reserved, if that makes sense, if that's the right word to say. The, the malt base really takes a back seat in this one for me. You can smell a little bit of that um, white bready note. There's not too much in the way of a noty creaminess coming out of this one, but then again it could be that the fruity side of the beer is kind of just drowning it out a little bit. Because yeah, um, the more you smell of this beer as well, the more your nose gets saturated a little bit with the, the tropical fruit side of the beer. But this does smell really nice, very, very juicy and very, very kind of sessionable. The more that I smell it, I do get this slightly melony quality out of it, which is uh, which is really quite interesting. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. Because this is quite an interesting one. It is quite unusual, actually. So just take a little bit of time, particularly with this one, and enjoy it. So let's have a taste of this one then and just see how we get on. This one is the Demon Juice, named after the Amar Demons, the local Danish uh, American football team. Next to the brewery, a collaboration between Amar Brewkus from Castro and Copenhagen, Denmark, and Title Town Brewing Company from Green Bay in Wisconsin, home of the Green Bay Packers. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, cheers. And New England IPA at 7% ABV. Oh, yeah. That's really good. That's the best New England IPA that I've had from Amar Brewkhouse so far. I mean, the Bastard Princess was nice, um, but this one for me just ticks a few more boxes than that. I was not saying there's anything wrong with the Bastard Princess, but this one is one of these ones where you can see immediately why it's, it's quite highly rated. Like I said, this one has a four, uh, four stars, 4.0 I think it was, on Untapped, and I can see this one. This is just the next level beyond... Uh, Bastard Princess in my mind. Yeah, that's good. Big thumbs up to both breweries involved here. Um, that's really, really pretty damn solid, I have to say. So, let's try and break this down a little bit then. Um, this first impressions of this beer is that it is one of the more creamy and smooth New England IPAs that you're going to come across. It doesn't lean too far into the creamy side of things. It's well balanced between that smooth and, cre and uh, creamy side of the spectrum. It more leans a little bit more towards the smooth side, to be quite honest now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, you can feel that nice that nice sort of white bready quality, just blanket the middle of your tongue. And that lingers there throughout the whole taste. Um, there's a little touch of a kind of oaty quality to this one. I don't know if they actually added oats to this one. I can't remember if it's said on the uh, the side here, but it does give the impression 
of a kind of oaty quality there. But the um, it says it's got a bit of wheat malt in it, which makes sense. Um, but Golden Promise is an interesting malt. I always remember it being quite biscuity and slightly bready as well. But I mean, overall, it's a really... The malt base in this one is really quite smooth and just gives the beer the level of thickness that you would want. This is The, the way that the malt base complements everything else in this is really, really quite good. Whereas I remember the, the Bastard Princess being... It felt a little bit thicker than this, but in the aftertaste, it did get that little bit wetter. I think they've managed to get something here that sustains really quite well, actually. So big thumbs up to them for that. It's cool to see them doing a style again and improving on it, in my mind. Yeah, I like this one. Um, solid New England IPA. The more I drink of it, the more I focus on that malt base, and you can feel, feel some of these kind of biscuity notes coming out in the middle of your palate too. Back corners of the palate then, you can pick out a little bit of that earthiness there. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, you can feel that quite distinctive spicy note from the Columbus. You can feel that nice bittering hop just kind of kicking in there. Columbus won't contribute to any of the fruity side of the beer, but it really does give you this nice um, this nice sort of, how would you describe it, a nice sort of quite spicy floral aromaticity to your beer and then round the very front curve of the palate the beer is just a little bit lighter and more uh, grassy and behind that front curve of the tongue there's that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And for me, this one's got quite a bit of stuff going on, in fact. So if you go to the very back of that oily bubble, you can pick out a little bit of that darker grapefruity note, and that'll be from the Citra. Coming further forward from that, you get the passion fruity notes from the Simcoe. Moving forward again, that's when you start to get the lighter mango notes, and then just before the kind of front tip of the tongue, that's where you get the, the juicier tangerine oranges from the mosaic for me. Almost on the very, if you just go inside from the front curve of your tongue a little bit, that's where those kind of almost melony notes from the, the Idaho 7 um, is coming out. Um, it's really interesting that, to be honest with you. I mean, it's it's a little bit melony, um, and when you go into the aftertaste, you start to detect these kind of complexities as well. Like I was saying, there is a little bit of a papaya apricot-y type note to this beer as well and that almost comes out on the very tip of your tongue too but in the very centre of the tip of your tongue it's got a little bit of a, a blueberry quality which if I remember rightly I always remember that Mosaic just had this little blueberry type note it's just like a little dot of blueberry right on the very tip of your tongue which is quite funny actually but this is a very this is one of these beers that's actually quite complex in terms of its level of fruitiness. The malt base is quite simple, but it just has a perfect thickness to it. And then it's got that nice little bit of bitterness there to back up the beer really well. So for me, the, complex, uh, the complexity of this beer comes from the fruitiness and the hops in here. Um, and it works really quite nicely. But the thing that they've really mastered in this one, I think, is having the malt base there and sustaining that level of thickness to the beer. And that's an improvement on the, the other Amar uh, Brewkus beers that I've had before. I've never tried anything from Title Town, so I can't really kind of uh, comment on their New England IPAs. But I think that's a brewery that I definitely want to get up and visit at some point fairly soon, actually. So, um, yeah, I'll keep that in mind for when I go back to the, the US next time. But, yeah, this is, in terms of of New England IPAs, this is a really, really good one, and it's got a bit of everything that you could want. So big thumbs up to Amar Brookers in the IPA categories. Um, this is definitely one of the better beers that I've had from them over the last little while. So you know, pleased with that actually. So I picked a good one when I was in Shiosk in Copenhagen last time. I'm pleased with myself for that. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then with this beer. Um, I would describe this one is being, um, this is a, a mid-bodied beer, and it's right in the middle of mid-bodied. Carbonation smooth. Um, I would say it's got a really smooth mouthfeel to this one. There is a little bit of an oily quality there, which helps bring out some of the fruity side of the beer, but at the same time, it has a little bit of wetness to it also. In terms of IBUs, I think we're talking about 25-ish. I'd be using this one. I do think maybe 30 at a push. I think we're sort of talking in that kind of region. The malt base, like I said, is very, very smooth. You do get a little touch of a biscuity sweetness in the middle of your palate, uh, and that'll be from the Golden Promise malt that's in there, which 
it gives you that and you do notice at the very centre of your palette it is quite biscuity then it just smooths out as you move further out from it um, you've got a lovely juicy fruity quality to this that's where the main complexity of the beer is for me and uh, everything just fits together really quite nicely in this one and I really like how the kind of malt base um, sustains its thickness if you like so a really really good beer this one one of the better ones in terms of IPAs that I've had from Amar Brucus in a little while actually and uh, it's cool like I say to encounter Title Town for the first time as well who seem to be pretty highly regarded as I mentioned earlier so yeah let's leave it at that for this one a really nice beer one of the best ones I've had from Amar in uh, a little while actually so it's one that I'll maybe see if I can try on tap the next time I make it over to the Amar tap, uh, tap room as well so yeah let's leave it at that for this one once again Pardon me. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. As always, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Amar Breakers and Title Town Brewing Company. And I'm sure I'll return to Amar in the future, and I do hope that I can get some of the Title Town beers at some point fairly soon as well. It'd be awesome to try some of their things on their own and do a proper sit-down review for you as well. But definitely a brewery I'll be keeping in mind for one of my out-and-about videos. But thank you again for watching my reviews. Make sure you check out my social media, and I'll catch you guys very soon. The Demon Juice 7% New England IPA from Amar Brewhouse in Castrop in Copenhagen in Denmark, and Title Town Brewing Company from Green Bay, Wisconsin, over in America. Until the next time, stand you just out, and I'll catch you guys there. Stand your school, make sure you try this beer, one of the best ones I've had from Amar in a wee while. Cheers.